Australian scientists are developing an oral drug that will not only treat long COVID, but has the potential to stop reinfections of the virus. Joining us live with more is John Wardle, public health professor at Southern Cross University. John, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. It sounds like wonderful news. Tell us about this discovery. What is it that, that researchers have found? Uh, thanks for having me, Ash. Yeah, it is really exciting. And look, it's, it's really clever, actually, what they've done uh, at QMIR, uh, QIMR. So uh, Professor Rao's team have basically found a way to um, tap into how the virus itself replicates and, and actually influences uh, the body's aspect and actually hijack that process to stop the virus replicating and reproducing. So uh, ordinarily, the, the virus would um, you know, come to the wall of the cell, attach itself to a receptor. That receptor would take it into the control center, the nucleus of the cell. Uh, and that process is essential to reproducing and, and um, replicating the virus. They've hijacked that process and actually turned that receptor into rather a transport a agent into the cell, um, turned it back into a lock to stop the cell, the, the virus actually getting into the cell and, and cutting off the whole process of inflammation, replication and uh, reproducing. It's uh, using the virus against itself, basically. Okay, amazing. And what stage of development is this all in? I mean, how soon before this sort of treatment could be available? Oh, look, I think it's important to, to note this is still in mostly preclinical phases. I, I saw Dr. Al, uh, Professor Al this morning actually say it was probably about two to three years away from, uh, you know, full marketability of this. There's a, there's a couple of safety studies that have been done, but the actual clinical trials still have to be done. Um, but I think this is really exciting. It, it's probably not going to work for everyone with long COVID. About 20% of people have long COVID. Some of that's due to the immune dysregulation, and this is the sort of target of this particular therapy. Um, you know, but some people may have impacts due to uh, permanent damage to to, to uh, lung tissues or blood or or, or other aspects, where, which may require other treatments and, and and management. But I think it's it's really exciting um, to to see this. Most of our focus has been on reducing the acute infections, but we look at a lot of acute infections like uh, you know Ebola, chikungunya. Um, you know, dengue, uh, tick-borne illnesses, you know, a, a lot of the impacts are actually long-term from this viral, this immune dysreg dysregulation that this can actually occur. So to see uh, hope for, you know, sufferers of, of the chronic implications is really heartening. And what about this potential to stop reinfections altogether? I mean, could we eventually get to the stage where we could all take this drug to, to stop any sort of reinfection and, and it could even replace vaccines? Is that where this is heading? Uh, I, I don't know if it will replace vaccines. You know, the, the, the number one, you know, um, in the best, most effective treatment for, for long COVID is avoiding reinfection or infection in the first place. So I think, you know, that is a really, you know, core focus of, of, of treatment uh, always. Um, I, I know Professor Rao has, has spoken about using this as a potential adjuvant to vaccines. I don't think it will replace vaccines uh, completely or, or, or natural immunity, but it, it does create another tool in the, in, in the toolkit that we can actually use. And, and frankly, the more... The more we can do to actually, you know, reduce the impact of this virus, the better. It's now endemic. It, it is going to be a big part of our life. Um, and, and just like other endemic conditions, you know, like, uh, you know, the annual flu shot or the annual flu season, reducing the actual infections themselves by any means possible, uh, whether that's antiviral uh, type treatments like this one or vaccination is, is, is really, uh, I think, a positive out outcome. As you pointed out, this is in, in pretty early stages and we still need to see all the clinical trials. But at this early stage, do we know anything about side effects? I mean, it, it sounds a bit too good to be true. Are there any downsides? <laughs> um, look, they have done safety trials. Um, I, I can't speak uh, to, to what the, the data on those is, is myself, but generally that's the first stage of this. And they don't really get to advance to those clinical trials unless those side effects are actually uh, manageable or, or at least outweighed by the potential benefit of the drugs. So I think the fact that they've actually passed that stage is, is, is quite heartening. Um, you know, I'd really like to see more clinical data. And I think the one thing to remember is this is a really complex condition. It does treat people, it does impact people very differently. Um, and, you know, just this is one uh, potential toolkit, but there are other ways of treatment and management uh, that I think we need to retain focus on. And Australia is pretty late to the party. Uh, on treatment of long COVID. You know, the UK and Germany have long COVID clinics. There's a lot of treatment and management opportunities uh, for people, um, you know, for the management of symptoms, not just the treatment. And I think, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, we don't get swept up in, in pinning all our hopes on this one treatment and ignoring all the other needs of, of people with long COVID as well. And so with long COVID, it does seem like new studies are coming out all the time around this and that we're learning a lot more about this condition as, as time goes on. What is mm -hmm. the latest thinking about how many people are actually experiencing it around the world and here in Australia and, and, and what this condition really is? 
Yeah, well, generally we think about 20% of people that have COVID will end up with long-term symptoms and how long those symptoms are uh, is completely, you know, unknown. Uh, we work with Ebola survivors, for example, and post-viral sequelae um, are still very present in, in people from that 2016, 2017 outbreak. Uh, people with chikungunya can be up to five, six years, then they resolve. Some people with ME or CFS have, um, you know, almost permanent uh, manifestations. So the science on long COVID is still very new. I remember in 2020, you know, talking to the New South Wales Ministry of Health and they were uh, convinced that long-term symptoms weren't even going to be a thing. So we've actually come a long way since then. Uh, and I think the thing to remember with, with long COVID is we're sort of, um, you know, we're, we're sort of in the position where we know as much about long COVID now as we did about acute COVID in 2020. We're still learning a lot. Um, there's still a lot to learn. Uh, and I think one of the things that we will find, hopefully, is that, you know, long COVID isn't the only uh, post-viral immunological symptom we actually have. Hopefully, by learning more about long COVID, we'll also be able to help people with ME, uh, CFS from, from other post-viral conditions uh, as well. Professor John Wardle, really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ash.